Harry and Meghan step out in Los Angeles as Meghan comes together with Michelle Obama for gender equality and social justice. You are standing up and demanding to be heard, yes, but you are also demanding to own the conversation. Kate teams up with Andy Murray and lends a helping hand to parents with young children. Hi, Andy. How are you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? Good. So why did you pick it was one of the few things I was good at. Plus, former Royal Press Secretary Dickie Arbiter talks about his time at the palace and shares his thoughts on Harry and Meghan's royal exit. I'm not terribly sure Harry is happy now. He's out of his comfort zone. Um, let's make very clear, Harry's comfort zone was the army. We've got that plus so much more in today's Royally Us. Hello to our fellow royal lovers and welcome to Royally Us. I'm Christina, that is Molly Molshine. You might remember her. She's been on the show several times and she's going to guest co-host for us this week. Molly, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How about you? I'm so good. I'm so excited that you're going to be doing this with us. We love having you on the show. Of course, Molly is a writer and the host of the Diva Behavior Podcast. So like I said, we are so excited for you to help us break down everything Royals this week. And I can't wait. It's been such an eventful year in royal history. It so really has. I feel like Carly and I say it every single week that, you know, every week is more dramatic than the next. And this does not disappoint. Yes. Like I said, Carly's taking a little time, a well-deserved time off. So um, we will definitely see her back next week. But before we get into all of our royal news, we have to shout out you, our royal viewers, our royal watchers. So here are some of the comments that you guys had on last week's show. So kicking it off with Linda, she says, I'm British and personally think Meghan and Harry have insulted our queen and country. They wanted a private life and have never been out of the media since. Molly, what do you think about this? Do you think that, you know, Harry and Meghan have been out and about more so than ever? I wouldn't say so. I think they've been out and about a little bit. And I think from what we've seen, it seems like it's not so much that they wanted a private life, but that they wanted control of their own narrative. Mm -hmm. So, and I think we have seen the beginnings of that with the lawsuit and the different things that Megan's been saying. So I think they have kind of gotten what they wanted. What are your thoughts? I think so too. I mean, I think they, you know, this is what they wanted. They wanted to step back. They wanted, like you said, to control the narrative and they are speaking at events that they want to speak at. They are going out when they want to go out and doing the, and working with charities that they want to work with. So you know, they're kind of doing their thing and that's what they wanted. All right, moving yes. on to Rosemary. She says, Kensington Palace made numerous denials on her behalf. Now this is of course talking about last week's um, story about Megan saying that she felt unprotected by the Royals um, during her pregnancy. So, I mean, they did make some denials on her behalf throughout uh, her time with the Royal family, but I guess she felt it wasn't really enough. Yeah, there definitely could have been more denials and just more clarifications because sometimes, you know, they would deny something and you just didn't know what part of it they were even talking about. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, there is definitely an issue with the way that they comment with the public. Yeah, I think so too. And last one, Pretty R2 says, kudos to Harry for speaking up about racism in Commonwealth. Yeah, last week, Harry and Meghan both spoke out about racism. This was the second time I believe that Meghan has spoken out, first time that really Harry has kind of come forward. And it's great that they're using their platform to kind of raise awareness during such an unsettling time. Yeah, and this is definitely a big conversation that they seem to be starting, and I'm very interested to see where that goes. Yeah, definitely. We will. We will. But, you know, let's move on to our Royal Roundup, our Royal News of the Week. And, you know, like we were saying, Megan has be been speaking out, and she continues to do so. This week, she teamed up with Michelle Obama, Hillary Clinton, Priyanka Chopra Jonas, and several other powerful women at the 2020 Girl Up Leadership Summit. Take a look. There will always be negative voices. And sometimes those voices can appear to be outsized, and sometimes they can appear to be painfully loud, but you can and will use your own voice to drown out that noise. Because that's what it is. It is just noise. But your voices are those of truth and hope, and your voices can and should be much louder. So this was pretty cool. Like I said, that there is a ton of powerful women speaking at this event and all about gender equality, social justice and you know megan of course is on the forefront of that and she's been speaking up about that for years yeah i thought it was great that the slogan of this event was the present is female because mm -hmm. we so often see that slogan the future is female and that's cool and all, but what about right now? So I thought that was a really great little twist on that saying. Yeah, I definitely think so. And then, you know, she's been 
they've been planning this for quite some time. So this is not something that just popped up, but she's been planning to, to speak at this for quite some time. And she also has a long connection with uh, Michelle Obama. She actually just recently signed on to their agency to do some speaking um, engagements coming forward. But she also has a long history with Michelle Obama, right? Yeah, she was able to visit with Michelle Obama in a private capacity when Michelle was speaking at the Royal Albert Hall a few years ago. She interviewed Michelle for British Vogue when she was the guest editor last year. So they definitely go back and I can't wait to see what else they do in the future. No, I can't wait either. I feel like, you know, you know, Harry and Meghan have really been stepping up and like really speaking out a lot more. And I wonder, we've been talking about this for weeks. I wonder when this charity is going to get announced and when we're going to get more of these speaking engagements and, you know, more behind, behind the scenes footage of their house because I'm always looking at what's in the background. <laughs> always, yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on. So days before Megan actually spoke out at the girls' summit, she and Harry actually hit the streets in matching masks in Beverly Hills. You know, we haven't really seen them out and about in Los Angeles, but this is the first time they kind of hit the streets and were, you know, amongst us regular folks. <laughs> yeah, and we got to see some of Megan's Cali girl street style, mm -hmm. which I always what? appreciate. She was wearing a dress from a sustainable female-led brand called Magic Linen, and I just love that even in her downtime, she's spotlighting these brands that she wants us to know more about. It's yeah. so cool. I love that. All the subtle little hints and messages, you know, nothing goes unnoticed and, you know, uh, every, every little detail has a little message, I feel like. Yeah. And she had a toothbrush in her hand. So everyone's speculating they were coming back from the dentist, but nobody really <laughs> knows what they were doing. Either way, they looked great and they had their masks on. So what more could oh, you need? Always concerned about their teeth too. So that's yeah. good. All right. We have a lot more news about Megan coming up in a little bit, um, including some more information about this ongoing lawsuit that she has, some news about Thomas Markle. So we're going to get to all of that in just a minute, but we want to shift gears, move on over to London where the Royal family, of course, has been keeping busy. And Kate actually launched this brand new initiative, Tiny Happy People. So take a look at this. In the first few months, there's a huge amount of support from midwives and, and um, health visitors and things. But from then onwards, you know, there's a massive gap before they then start school. Some of the things that the parents today, you know, Ryan at the beginning, saying how you know his baby's got five different cries he's learned a huge amount from tiny happy people and it's information like that i wish i had had as a first time mom but so many parents it's 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 gold dust really mm. for families to be given those tips and tools to be able to use particularly in these first five years so this is really cool because you know parenting is something that is super super important to kate she has spoken out about how important the first five years of a kid's life is and how you know that really molds their brain and you know it's such an important time in not only a kid's life but a parent's life so this is something that she's really really passionate about and what this initiative is really about yeah and i think it's so great that she pays so much attention to early childhood because it's something that really will affect the people who she's going to be I guess, ruling over, not right. really ruling over, but when she's queen, those are going to be the people that she's been working with. Mm -hmm. So I think that's so fitting. And what she's doing right now with the Tiny Happy People Initiative, the really great thing about it is it's something that every family can participate in, right? She's mm -hmm. hoping to help people learn how to communicate more with their children so that their children will learn to talk in a earlier, better way, I guess. So I think that's really cool. And in the video that Kensington Palace released, they say, you know, talking to your kids is free. So I think it's just a great inclusive project that will really help people. No, totally. I'm going to jump on board. My, my 14 month old, all she says is data and hi. So I'm like, and she needs to talk a little bit more. So maybe I'll use <laughs> some of these tools. I love it. So um, another thing that uh, Kate is really passionate about is tennis. We know that she has always shown up to Wimbledon, but of course Wim Wimbledon is canceled this year because of the coronavirus, but she managed to put together a really special surprise for some tennis fans. Take a look. Well, when I played my first tennis match, I was very young. Um, I would have been about seven. I didn't really know the rules, um, and I had to keep score um, at that age. But... Ah. Bye. Enjoy your holidays. I love this. So she got Andy Murray on board to surprise some big tennis fans. And if you love tennis, there's nothing bigger than that. 
I know. I love her sort of, I guess it's not a bromance because they're not both bros, but she's got sort of this bromance going on with Andy Murray and I love it. They're yes. kind of like interacting in the press very frequently. Mm -hmm. Apparently Andy has given George tennis lessons and he ha he said he has a very powerful swing. So it's just a pretty fun, I mean, I think that would be a fun movie, like a buddy comedy, Kate <laughs> and Andy. Yes, she has definitely like a celebrity crush on Andy Murray. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully William doesn't get too jealous about that one. But yeah, so, <laughs> so I, I would love for them to like release some footage of little George playing tennis. That would just be the cutest little thing in the world. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So we actually had a scary moment this week in royal news because Prince Charles was out in an event and a supermarket worker fainted in front of him. You have to take a look at this video. Take a look. Oh my God, so this was so scary. I felt so, I my heart like just broke for this guy because you know that he was probably just so embarrassed after this happened. Luckily he is okay, but probably just so embarrassed. Yeah, like he was just so nervous to speak to Charles that he passed out. I can't imagine. I can't imagine either. And it's like, you don't want to laugh because maybe he's laughing now, but like, uh, you, you just feel so bad. But yes, he was okay. And I guess they ended up speaking later. But you see Charles like almost going to reach for him. And then he remembers, I can't touch anybody because of the coronavirus. So it was just a bad yeah. situation. And then he kind of doesn't know what to do. So he's just standing there and then he goes and talks to someone else. I was like, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <laughs> like second what embarrassment at the worst. Oh God, I feel so bad. But luckily everybody is okay. And hopefully he's getting, getting a good laugh out of it now. Yes. All right, so let's move right along. It is time to spill the royalty. And of course we have a lot to get to. A lot of this has to uh, surround with Harry and Megan, but this ongoing legal saga that Megan is involved in with the tabloids, it just keeps getting more and more complex. So. We learned this week that Megan is trying to block some of the names being released, right? Yeah, so as people will probably remember, five of Megan's friends spoke to People Magazine and kind of told her side of the story a few years ago. And Megan is saying that she had nothing to do with that. And she they went to the they went to people independently while the mail on Sunday is sort of arguing that she didn't have a right to privacy because she was involved in this. Mm -hmm. So now the mail wants to release the names of these five friends, and Megan is arguing that she shouldn't have to because she said, I'm not the one who's on trial. Right. Yeah. And neither are they. It's, I mean, it's, I mean, do you think that the tabloids should be able to release this information? Look, I would be lying if I said I wasn't dying to know who the friends were. <laughs> I'm just nosy. But the fact of the matter is the point of journalism is supposed to be to help the public good. And there's really not much that the public is going to benefit from from knowing the names of these people it really doesn't matter yeah. and i think the main thing that megan said that is real that really needs to be understood is that she feels that the male is using this trial as a way to sort of mine for content they're mm -hmm. every single new development in this trial they're turning into articles and she actually used the term clickbait which is yeah. very controversial in her statement um, so she feels that they only want to release the names so that they can get those clicks. And I mean, I guess it's up to every person to decide whether they find they feel that that is ethical or not. But that's what she thinks. So I mean, I kind of have to agree. I mean, I don't really see any other reason why that they would release this other than to make Megan really mad and to drive some traffic, which it would, because like you said, like everybody's interested to see who these close people really are to her. It's just, it's just a bad yeah. situation. And you also know, like pro tip, if you just look at the descriptions of the people, it's pretty easy to guess. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, that is true. That is, that is very, very true. If you put on your investigative hat, it, it's probably not that, that hard. Yeah. Um, well, now this comes as reports that Megan's relationship with her friend, Jessica Moroni is super strained after Jessica had a very public spat with uh, blogger Sasha Exeter. Now we are hearing that Jessica, so there are conflicting reports that Jessica might be writing a tell-all book, but I think her husband kind of shut that down, right? 
Right. So in the Daily Mail story about the book, the headline was Jessica Mulrooney has been reaching out to Meghan Markle and he retweeted that with the word false. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure whether he was saying the idea that she's been reaching out to Meghan is false or that the book thing is false. So, I mean, the book would be extremely juicy, obviously, Mm -hmm. but I just can't really see her doing that based on what her role has been in society up till now. She's sort of like a Canadian A-lister, if that is a thing. (laughs) And (laughs) no shade to Canada, but she, she doesn't seem like someone who would be like throwing her social status under the bus in order to make a buck because the Mulroonies don't really need much more bucks than what they already have. So. And and she and Megan have had a friendship for so many years and it's not like she and Megan had a fight that were, and you know, who knows? I mean, you don't know the inner workings of the relationship. We have heard that their relationship is strained because of all of this, but you know, who knows? Who knows what's going on behind closed doors if they're working things out? But you know, Jessica's kids were in Megan's wedding. They're very, very close. They have a long, long relationship. They were very good friends when she was living in Canada filming suits. So I really don't see her writing a tell-all book, but hey, crazier things have happened. Right. Yeah, well, somebody that might be writing a tell-all book is <laughs> Thomas Markle. Wouldn't be surprised about that. Um, as we know, she, Thomas and Megan have had a very strange relationship in the past couple years. But now we are hearing that Thomas is writing letters to Megan since she's been in L.A., but they are remained unopened, which isn't so surprising because Thomas, like I said, Thomas and Megan have a really, really, really terrible relationship. Yeah, I'm having a hard time imagining what he could say to her at this point that would really make up for everything that he's done because actions speak louder than words and he's sort of blown it on numerous occasions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, like he staged photos before their wedding. He didn't show up to the wedding because he claimed he had a heart attack. You know, he speaks out about her numerous times in the press, basically slams Harry all the time, slams Megan. So I can't imagine being like, dear Megan, I miss you so much. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not going to happen, I don't think. Yeah, he's definitely crossed the Rubicon at this point. <laughs> he really has. Well, let's move on to some lighter news. I love this story because Ryan Reynolds actually poked fun at Megan and Harry on his game show, Don't, which is hosted by Adam Scott. Take a look. Or D, Duchess of Sussex. Or E, we taped this show seven months ago. Oh, Ryan Reynolds, always there for a good joke. (laughs) So cheeky. (laughs) So cheeky. So basically he said, like you saw the clip, that they shot this seven months ago. And obviously in those seven months, Harry and Meghan have left the royal family. So it doesn't really apply anymore. And apparently the people who answered the question said Duchess of Cornwall anyway. So... (laughs) Apparently they've been living under a rock for quite some time too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and apparently right. this is the first time he's sort of ribbed yeah. Harry and Megan. He kind of shaded them with a little bit of a Canada joke when they moved to Toronto. Yes, totally. Yes. I think that's so funny. Like he's just great on social media as well. He's just so funny. So if you don't follow him that you should, but like I said, he's always there for a good joke. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he knows how to laugh at himself too, which is he does. Important. He does. He and Blake Lively both know how to laugh at themselves. I love them. They're a great couple. Um, mm-hmm. All right. Well, now it is time to break down the royal rules, and to help us do that is Dicky Arbiter. I had the chance to sit down with him recently. He's the former royal press secretary to the Queen. He has a ton of amazing stories, so he told us all about that, and he also gave us some insight on how he thinks Harry and Meghan are faring after their royal exit. As somebody that has been, you know, in with the the royal family, has been covering them for years, I mean, this must have been come as such a shock that they stepped back. Well, it didn't come as a shock, but it came as a great surprise. You know, when I think of of, uh, the Queen, who's been on the throne for 68 years, the press she's had hasn't been perfect. Mm -hmm. Uh, You take 1992, the Addis Horribilis, when anything that could go wrong did go wrong. And it was a dreadful year for her. Two of her children got uh, separated. Um, One got divorced. Fire at Windsor Castle, the book Dino, her true story. If, if, if anything was rotten in, in the media, that was it. But did the Queen walk away? No, of course she didn't. She realises that she has a job to do. It's one of the things that goes with the job. And then you leap ahead a few years. When Dino died, Charles, Prince of Wales, got the most horrendous press. He was accused of, of a death. He was uh, accused of extramarital affairs. Well, he admitted to that. Uh, while still married to Diana. Camilla was uh, 
called a Rottweiler. Um, and again, if you can't take it and you walk away from it, he didn't walk away from it, Camilla didn't walk away from it. Today, they are two of the most popular royals alongside with, with William and Catherine and the Queen. So it is one of the, the things that being a member of the royal family, having a free press as we do, that you've just got to grit and bear it. Right. Do you think Harry is happy now? I'm not terribly sure Harry is happy now. He's out of his comfort zone. Um, let's make very clear, Harry's comfort zone was the army. Mm -hmm. And it was probably a great mistake him leaving the army. He felt very comfortable. It's something that he always wanted to do, to go into the army. First, then he did two tours of duty in Afghanistan. One as a, a forward observation officer, second time as an Apache helicopter pilot, and he thrived on it. You know, we've we've gotten reporting that, you know, since he moved, he and William have been talking a little bit more, you know, maybe getting up back on better terms. Have you heard that as well? And do you foresee them kind of settling this rift going forward? Well, I hope they settle their rift because there shouldn't be bad blood amongst brothers, particularly those two brothers who went through such trauma together on the death of their mother in August 1997. Uh, and they've been through a lot and they've carried each other and they've supported each other. And to have a rift is, is not healthy in any family. So I hope they are getting back together again. But Harry being in Los Angeles and William and Catherine being in the United Kingdom, that's a great big ocean, a lot of land between. Um, and it's not going to be broached until such time they actually get together. Yeah. Will Harry come back to the UK? That's the million dollar question. Mm -hmm. When? Again, two million dollar question. Yeah. So if they're talking on the phone, well, that's a step in the right direction. But it would be nice if they could actually meet up and, uh, as we say in the UK, kiss and make up. Right. I mean, what do you think the future holds for Harry and Meghan? You know, obviously there's a lot of these talks about them launching their Archwell charity. I mean, there's even rumors maybe Megan would get into politics in the future. I mean, what do, you, what do you think is in store for them? I don't know what's in store for them. And I wonder if they know themselves what's in store for them. The, the, the setting up of the, the charity foundation article is on hold because mm -hmm. of COVID-19. Uh, it's, it's a pandemic, global pandemic. So everything is on hold, whether you're in the United States or, or the United Kingdom or in Australia. Um, and until such time that everything is back to a new normal, that they're, they're, on a, they're, they're out on limbo at the moment. Mm -hmm. They allegedly signed up with, with a New York or Washington speaking agency. What are they going to speak about? I think most people, knowing it's going to be Harry, want to hear not so much about Harry's views about the Commonwealth or about conservation. They like to hear about the royal family. Well, I don't think Harry's going to talk about the royal family. So are they going to command those sort of fees? I think they're in limbo at the moment. And being in limbo, being so far away, is not very healthy for either of them. And I hope that the pandemic calms down in your part of the world, as it has probably in my part of the world, and people can get on with their lives in a normal way. What was it like being the Queen's press secretary? I mean, kind of sum it up. I mean, it had to be such an unbelievable experience. Well, it was an unbelievable experience, but you know, I, I, I'm a bit of a maverick, and I, to me, it was a job. Yeah. Uh, it was a job that I was employed to do, and I thought I did a, a pretty good job. My experience has been broadcasting television and radio, I was accredited to the palace for 10 years beforehand. So I knew everybody, they knew me. I didn't go in with what we call red carpet fever, yeah. which is sort of bowing and scraping to everybody. And yes, sir, no, sir, three bags full, sir. Um, <laughs> but it was, it was a job to be done and I did it. And it was probably the nicest office block I've ever worked in. I'm sure. Um, great, valuable furniture, valuable paintings on, on the walls, valuable furniture on the floor, valuable carpets. Um, you couldn't wish to work in a better office block, i.e. museum. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, it was a great job and it was a great honor. It was, it was great working with, royal, with the royal family. They don't become your friends. They, they offer friendliness, but not friendship. I mean, do you have a favorite memory of with, with the royal family during that time? Oh, I think I've told this story time and time again. I think my favorite memory is when I first joined the palace. Um, my, my immediate boss, who's the private secretary, 
um, said uh, he was in charge of the press department and the secretariat. He said, um, you've been invited up to Balmoral for a dine and sleep. Now, a dine and sleep is normally 24 hours, mm -hmm. you, but I was up there for just over 48 hours uh, to meet the Queen. I said, well, I met the Queen. He said, yes, but you've never worked for the Queen. So off I went to Balmoral and I arrived there. And it was raining cats and dogs. And I thought, goodness me, this is a good start. <laughs> and as I walked in, the footman who greeted me to take me to my room said, can you be downstairs in the entrance hall in, in 30 minutes because you're going on a picnic with Her Majesty? And he saw the look on my face. He said, well, don't worry. Uh, you're going to a log cabin. You're not going to be out in the open. <laughs> anyway, I kicked my heels downstairs and this five foot four whirlwind whipped past me and said, come on, get in. And it was the Queen. And I sort of followed her out to Land Rover and she got in the driving seat and I fumbled with the front door and got in. And for a moment I thought, my goodness, I'm going to navigate because here I am in the passenger seat. And I thought, don't be an idiot. You've never been here before. So what do you know? Let's leave it for the boss. And we, we, we went quite fast, actually. She's, she's got a bit of a, a lead weight in, or used to in her right foot. You've got mm. to remember she learned to drive on trucks and cars right. uh, during the war. Also learned to ride a motorbike. So she's pretty au fait with the, with the mechanics of the car. Anyway, we got to this log cabin and uh, she dived inside and I was left outside with Prince Philip. And he told me the lay of the land. He knew I'd spent time in Southern Africa and we talked about wildlife conservation. Um, and we then went in for lunch. Now there were only four people at this lunch. It was the Queen, Prince Philip, a lady in waiting, myself. We had lunch, I haven't got a clue what we talked about. It was China, there was silver cutlery, and there was Tupperware. So we helped ourselves from the Tupperware. And afterwards, um, the Queen said, well, we've got to clear up. Because she was meticulous about leaving something spotless, because that's how she found it, spotless. Uh -huh. So I piled the dishes, I went into the kitchen, started doing the washing up, and I heard this footfall, and I thought, oh, terrific, the lady in waiting has come to give me a hand. So I said casually over my shoulder without turning, okay, I'll wash you dry. <laughs> and there was a pregnant pause, and this voice very familiar said no i'll wash you dry <laughs> so, um, the queen did the washing up and i did the drying that's amazing what an incredible story what an incredible experience that must have been it was great it was terrific okay. she's, she's human she, she, she yeah. was very human mm -hmm. i think that's what a lot of people don't realize that you know they are normal people just like us but just with they, are normal people. they do normal things they don't necessarily want wear normal clothes i mean she's got lots of jewelry and when it comes out to a state visit then all the all the pretty baubles come out mm -hmm. uh, and they're not just baubles they are very valuable baubles um, yeah. so a little bit different she lives in a castle at windsor she's got a big house in in norfolk sandringham or she lives at uh, hollywood house uh, at balmoral castle in scotland uh, and when she's working, she stays at Buckingham Palace. So she's got accommodation slightly different than, than you and I. Yeah. But she's pretty normal. She likes, she's frugal. If yeah. there are lights on and she's walking around and there's nobody there, she'll switch the lights off. I love that. I think that's great. Did you have any moments with Diana? Yeah, Diana, Diana was, a, was a great person because when I joined the Queen, uh, as one of her press secretaries, my immediate responsibility while being for her was also for Charles and Diana. And when I turned 50, uh, Diana gave me a birthday party uh, at, at Kensington Palace. And it was terrific because I was in blood, invited uh, 20 people. Uh, so my family came, my daughter Victoria, whom you know well, yep. my mother who died a couple of years ago, my wife, and um, 18 other guests. And it was terrific. Diana put on helium balloons, party poppers, uh, crackers. Uh, it was a birthday cake in the shape, in the old, in the old days, in, in the 1990s, Telephones were still in the shape of a brick. <laughs> they, were, they, they were about that big and, and you needed very big hands to hold them. Yeah. But she had her chef make a birthday cake in the shape of a brick, uh, in the shape of a telephone. And I always carried a telephone around uh, with me to keep in touch with the office. And on the cake in icing was, you're never alone when Dickie's got his phone. <laughs> we, had, we had sparklers as well. So it was a great time. It was. It, it, it was an experience, another one of those fabulous experiences. She's only done it once, she's never done it again. And, well, she never did it, obviously hasn't done it again because sadly she passed away in 97, but she never did it before. And I think I was the only one she ever did it for. Well, Dickie, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time and speaking with us. And if you want to tell everybody where they can go and get your book, that would be fantastic. Well, they can get it on Amazon or they can email me 
uh, best thing is to email me at dickyharmiter at gmail.com. Well, thanks so much to Dickie. Such great, fabulous stories. And make sure to pick up his book, Duty with the Queen. All right, let's move on to our Royal History Moment of the Week. And this is something that I am super excited about. I don't know about you, Molly, but the Royals, we're going to be able to drink like the Royals pretty much, right? Because they are releasing a brand new gin. Yeah, I mean, that is so exciting. The one royal that I've always tried to not quite drink like is Princess Margaret. Have you ever <laughs> seen her daily schedule? That was... No. Oh my God, you have to look it up. So her daily schedule was like, wake up at 10, drink a bottle of champagne by like one. If you Google it, it'll come up. It's hilarious. But That's she fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> goals. <laughs> well, we do know that um, that the queen does enjoy a nice gin every single day, right? Yes, she loves a tipple. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we heard that, so this new gin is infused with citrus and herbal notes derived from, I'm just going to read this so I don't get it wrong, 12 botanicals, several of which are from Buckingham Palace Garden. So this is really cool. They're going to be serving this at some palace events and you can actually buy it. It's around $50 a bottle and all the profits from the sales will go to the Royal Collection Trust, which helps manage and conserve the Queen's extensive art collection. So you were doing some good for the Queen. <laughs> yeah, have some gin and look at some art. That sounds like a pretty good afternoon to me. It really does. It really does. So yeah, I don't know when it's going to go on sale, but we'll keep you updated. Maybe we'll get a bottle and try it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Molly, before we wrap up, we have to check in on our royal kiddos in our pint-sized palace. And this is actually a really cool story because a seven-year-old boy actually made Queen Elizabeth's day. Tell me all about it. So he wrote a little word search game. It was called the happiness word search so that he could, so that the queen could find words like smile, hug, and friends, which is really sweet. He was seven years old. And his mom said that he got a thank you note from one of the queen's ladies in waiting. Mm -hmm. uh, so she had her lady in waiting write a little response saying thank you and that the queen appreciated his thoughtfulness and hopes that he's keeping safe and well in the current situation. Oh, so cute. I love that. I love that. Hey, you never know. If you write the queen, you might get some type of response. I think it happens pretty frequently. So. Yeah. Oh, adorable. Well, Molly, thank you so much for breaking down all things Royals with me. I really, really appreciate it. This was so much fun. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This has been great. Yes. And make sure to listen to Molly's podcast, The Diva Behavior. And if you want all of your Royal news, make sure you head on over to usmagazine.com. Keep commenting, keep subscribing, and we'll see you guys next week.